Hi everyone, Gerald Webb here from Live Web Video with another tutorial on multicam editing. We're going to touch on a few things today. Um, at the very least, you'll be able to brush up on your Vegas chops. We're going to go into setting up a multi camera, and by multi, I mean more than two um, workflow that will get you through even the toughest of events so our plus six camera is a piece of cake if you set it up the right way it is a bit drawn out because there's a lot in it um, I'll try to go through things by the numbers and you can maybe jump ahead if it gets too tedious for you but at the very least um, even if you're not doing any multi-camera editing there's a lot of shortcuts in here, there's a lot of um, techniques just for editing on the timeline and using some vegs as well which if you haven't done can be very handy in all facets of editing in Sony Vegas. So we should probably get right into it. So let's get started. We'll open a project. Um, Let's see. Uh, to, and we'll just have a look at all of our files dragged in. Uh, this is just a dance concert that I've done recently. Um, we have six, no, seven cameras on the timeline. It will make it hard without the dual monitors, but we'll just have to um, have to work around it. And we have all our cameras and they've been synced. I use Pluralize. Um, I find it really fast and easy. You can sync them manually. Um, it will take you a while. You've got to use the waveforms, try and line up stuff as you can see here. You could do that, but wow, it's hard work. And especially with all the multiple files you'll have at long events if it only goes for 10 minutes yeah it's easy to sync manually if you've got an hour say well then you're going to have lots of different files that are spat out by the camera and uh, depending on your camera you may drop a frame or two as they change as you'll see here there's two frames that drop as it begins to make a new file in camera. So if you're doing that manually, ooh, it's hard, but Pluralize will do that for you. So that's what it looks like. You get a big mess on the timeline. Uh, you can see here, that's actually where the power cord got knocked out of the wall by one of the public. <laughs> and like I said, there's always issues when you're doing long events. So we lost a portion of that camera there, but it's all been synced and yeah, happy days. Now we'll just open that, uh, the same project and all I've done here uh, to sync is trimmed the beginning. So we have a start point of our edit. Now what we're going to do is drag all of these cameras into projects of their own. If you've never done, any Vegas nesting that's what we're going to do here and it involves dragging each of the tracks into its own project and then you re-import those projects as Vegas veggies and how we do that is we insert empty events at any of the cameras that start later than the start of our edit why we put the empty events in when we drag them into the new project, if we didn't have those empty events there, it would automatically move our camera file, so this one here, to the beginning of our project, and that would throw out our sync. So we do that. Now, all it involves is you open a new Vegas project. Now we've got the two windows open. Okay, we'll go back to this. Actually, what we might do to make it a lot simpler, and just for ease, we might trim our whole project down to make it a lot shorter. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting for these things to render and all the rest. So that should give us, um, let's see, 
Yeah, there we're into the third thing. So we go control A and we hit S. And then we hit D D to bring up our marquee tool. And we'll select everything after and delete. And I'll resave that. Save as C2 syncs and I'll just add two, so I know it's a short version, save. Okay, that'll make things go a lot quicker. So as I said, yeah, we have our other project open. So I've brought up the marquee tool. I select one whole camera, it's audio and video. And I hit control C. And I click in the new project, control V, and there we have. Now, as you can see, the empty event's been brought over, which keeps our track in sync with our master project. That's why. Now we'll save this, save as, and that's our JVC camera. So we might go to JVC one and save it, done. Okay, now we hit new, and you have to make sure all of your project settings are the same in your master project as in your veggies. Otherwise, it will get messy again because Vegas has to re-render everything as it reads it and it slows down your previews. So yeah, just do that. Okay. So again, we've got a blank project. We go back to our master project. We select our HV20 camera, control C. We go to our blank project, click, control V. Again, save as. So two HV20. Save, again, new, same again, and we go through, I might just do a pause here and then we'll do them all. Okay, so we've done that, we've put all of the tracks into their own comps, so now what we want to do is we create a new project with the same project settings, of course, new, and now we open up an explorer window, uh, which is here, and there we have all of our projects, and I'm going to drag them in one at a time, and it'll render an SFAP file for each of them, which takes a little bit of time. Okay, so here we have all of our veggies dragged into a new Vegas Pro project. Um, I've just renamed this Tute All. Well, doesn't really matter, you can call it anything that you want to to keep it organised. I guess the first thing you normally do would be to check your sync just to make sure nothing's happened with moving the files around. So if we just. Um, play it for a bit and have a look at the individual cameras. We'll just turn that down so it's a little less annoying. And you can just go through and solo your cameras just to make sure that everything's in sync. which everything looks pretty good, I think. A 
of course you're looking at the cameras before they've been cut so there's no guarantee that you're looking at the right shots that you want so anyway that all looks good so we'll stop that so now the next step is to make a multicam track out of all of these tracks so you highlight your video tracks so you highlight one and hold control highlight another one hold control just uh, you keep holding control highlight all of your video tracks then go up to tools multi-camera create multi-camera track yes okay and there we have now a little bit more space to work with which is great Um, now, audio. With any of the dance concerts, I normally replace the camera audio during the dances with the CD track of the appropriate music. Um, and then you just bring in your applause at the beginnings and ends as needed. But that's up to you and that's, that's another issue besides the multi-camming. So for now, we'll just highlight one and we'll minimize all of the others it's probably a good idea not to delete all of your extra audio tracks you will have times where you choose one camera say and you're using that audio and then you get to a point where uh, for some reason that camera's audio is no good so you might want to cut a small piece of audio from another camera and insert it so i normally just leave them uh, as small as they can be just out of the way and that way you can get them if you want to so now comes the multi-cam part if you hit now that you have a multi-camera track if you hit control shift d now i'll just do it there you can see see there control shift d to enable multi-camera editing which will give you all of your cameras on the screen. So now if we play, and here we go. Now your quality will go down. If you have a weaker computer, it will struggle doing this because it's trying to play however many cameras you have, all your files. And do yourself a favor, if you have more than one hard drive on your computer, try and spread those files over as many hard drives as you can. It'll lighten the load significantly. So now it just comes back to your choosing your shots. And as you'll notice down here, it applies cuts as you choose your shots. If you wanted to apply a fade, uh, you can hold control as you click and it'll insert a cross fade where the cut. So now you just go through and you do an edit. Um, I'm not real worried about it now because it's not why we're here. So you choose lots of different shots. Oh, there's a nice one. And you go through and you do your edit. What we might address is once you get to the end of a particular section, and there we have the end. Normally in between tracks of any live event, there's a lot of rubbish in there that you don't want in your edit. So you find a place where you want to cut. Um, if you hit Control A and split S on the keyboard, then you find where you want to come back in again. So this is where the next dance starts. So we might get it just as the lights come up and we'll hit split again because it's already all selected. Now we've got all this rubbish in between that we don't want. So the easiest way to get rid of that and maintain our sync is to hit DD on the keyboard, which brings up our marquee tool. And we select all of that and we hit delete. Now we've got a big gap. Now you don't want to have to drag each of these events along individually because what can happen if you've got any splits up here, then it will go out of sync because you'll leave a part behind. You'll be dragging one portion. So if 
I hit DD again. Say I've already cut this here. Now, if I dragged that, oh no, it's all out of sync and I've left that behind. So I hit Control Z to stop. So what we do, you come down here and you come up here and you enable your ripple edit. Now, we don't want affected tracks, we want all tracks, markers and regions. So therefore, if you have markers in your project, uh, many regions in your project and all of the tracks, now if I select that, I can press that button or I can hit Control L. See, so that turns it on and off. Hit Control L, I grab anything and everything behind it gets dragged down even where I cut that track. So anything past where you're dragging all gets dragged down. So now, if we wanted to, we could just make a crossfade. Doesn't really matter for what. Uh, if I get out of multi-camera mode, and we go back to normal, we will be able to see and we start on the next track. That will keep everything in sync and you won't lose anything because that's one of the worst things. If you do a lot of cuts and you move stuff around, then you edit for another hour and then you get up here and find that, oh no, everything's gone out of sync up the line. Okay, well that's a bit of a basic rundown on how to set up your project. What we'll have a look at in part two is how to substitute your intermediate files for your original camera files, which will make your editing experience on the timeline and your preview quality way better than what it is by just using your highly compressed files out of the camera. Um, that's part of the reason why we nest all the projects so we can replace those during the edit. See you for the next part. Thank you.